So, as you <laughs> may have heard from last talk, uh, I'm here to talk about an unfortunately um, simultaneously named project. Uh, if, if you've been around the community for a bit, you may have known that I'm well versed in NICs and various things that you should never do with NICs, but can technically do. Um, but, uh, yeah, Tim talking about some of that, but mostly about a project I've been, uh, I started about three years ago, uh, trying to get a, um, well, ending up in a bunch of interesting things that I think more people are going to be interested in. Uh, so, three years ago, I was partaking in a Nix developer's favorite pastime, which is, of course, rewriting my Nix West configuration. But uh, unlike usually, uh, I kind of got distracted because uh, dealing with a lot of the quirks in NixOS and Nix packages was a thing that's kind of, uh, that I just kind of started wondering at that point, why are Nix packages, well, NixOS and Geeks, the only real options for doing declarative system configuration? Because I think Nix, the concept of declarative system configuration is great, and I am never going to go back to non-declarative configuration. But in my like total of six years of dealing with NixOS, I've kind of gotten to the point where I think that we can do better. Uh, and I think that one of the problems that, one of the issues I think that happened is that we tolerate a lot of weirdness about NixOS because it is declarative. If anything goes wrong, you can just reboot, jump into an older configuration and be done with it. When if in Arch Linux something breaks, you're going to have to find live ISO, boot it and fix it manually. Um, and the thing is that um, Nix is very good technology. Uh, it's, it's pretty sta it's stable, it's got really good primitives, but I was just wondering, what if I just started from scratch and made something entirely new on top of Nix only? So, three years ago, I never finished that NixOS configuration rewrite and started working on a prototype for something I ended up calling Zilch. Um, the original prototype for Zilch, uh, the first one I wrote, written entirely in Nix, uh, designed... Uh, the idea was to be a replacement for both Nix packages and NixOS. And um, one of the goals I had was, well, the primary goal I had was ignore everything, uh, try to do as much as different as to Nix packages, just to like explore the design space. And turns out that if I try to do this, things get a bit weird. Um, as an example, this is what a derivation looks like in Zilch. This is, in fact, Nix expression language code. Uh, but nowhere in Zilch do I call built-in uh, derivation even. Uh, or even, uh, I, and this is, uh, I, I don't have an equivalent to make derivation either. Uh, all of what you see here is just a package, basically. Um, let's see. Uh, Starting off, uh, you can see that the commands is not just a string or a list, it's a more complex structure. Because uh, it's, it's, uh, so, um, Zilch is a built operation, the deriv uh, derivation equivalent supports exact line natively, which I use a lot in the bootstrap for Zilch, because uh, it is um, compared to, um, sorry, um, yeah, the, sorry. Yeah, uh, compared to the, uh, compared to, um, sorry, I'm just going to skip this bit. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, one of the, one of the bigger advantages that's uh, of exact line over using shell is that it's just uh, a bit more solid when dealing with uh, strings with, uh, uh, yeah. I guess the primary thing that shows this is just that Nix package. Uh, I was very worried of accidentally getting string interpolation wrong in shell, and there's no good syntax for that in uh, to enforce that in Nix packages. So I just decided to sidestep that entire issue and go with something completely different. Um, and you can see that the uh, with copied source helper here takes just that list of our uh, commands and. Uh, the actual with copied source is just a helper that runs some extra stuff and then just appends the original command list to that, which then just merges in properly and makes sure that everything runs as expected with the uh, source copied from the derivation to make it writable. And uh, the actual definition for build is also a bit more different than your use from Nix because. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's basically a parallel universe version of built in stuff derivation. Uh, everything has been separated out nicely. Uh, uh, instead of mixing environments variables with configuration for the derivation itself. So, for example, the mode here is not like a list of attributes output, uh, output hash, output hash mode, output hash algo. Instead, it's a nice little tagged enum that you can just use and is, I believe, a lot more self describing than. Uh, the equivalent in that Nix currently has. And fetch URL uh, got the same kind of makeover. Pass in the URL, a name, and an output mode that describes the hash of the file. Uh, and interestingly, I don't choose fetch URL the built in, but fetch URL the built in, which is a lot more obscure and is used only during the bootstrap in Nix packages, I believe and runs at derivation uh, at build time instead of at evaluation time. So now that I have these basic components of a, that now that I've replaced all the basic components of the Nix expression language, I can start building a packages. And here things started getting kind of downhill for this prototype. Because I was being contrarian still, and I didn't want to use the equivalent bootstrap that Nix packages has, so I decided I'm just going to use like uh, the off-the-shelf toy box binary that um, is used by uh, that's published by Rob Landley, the developer of Toybox. So I can just download that and run it from the Nix store, right? Well, it doesn't really like that because uh, the issue with both BusyBox and Toybox is that the applet names needed to run the actual binaries like embedded within them needs to be exact, and putting a bunch of random characters in front makes it not be happy. Nixpack just solves this by uh, having a patched version of BusyBox, but again, I wanted to do things differently. So I came up with the absolute worst solution I could think of. I um, wrote a NAR file writer in not Nix, because you cannot have null bytes in Nix. Though it would have been really easy if I could. But then again, this talk would have been a bit shorter. Uh, instead, uh, there is one file that is in basically every Nix sandbox that is just barely capable of doing this. It is bin sh, which is technically an impurity, but I, lied, I aligned myself to use it because otherwise this wouldn't really be possible, and it's a lot funnier this project this way. Um, it's tricky to do, and it requires a lot of uh, repeated code, but I could get enough uh, working to create a NAR file that contains a symlink to the actual toy box binary so I could actually use it. Except I have a NAR file in the Nix store, but it is not a directory structure, it's just a file. So it needs to be like unpacked of some sort. If only there was some kind of built-in feature that would allow that. As far as I can tell, the unpack flag in built-in fetch URL has zero uses anywhere in Nix packages 
and likely outside of it. When I first encountered this, I thought, oh, this is useful. It can like unpack tarballs or something. No, it unpacks NAR files. But the issue is, I still have to get a URL for this other store path. Uh, I could, of course, set up like a hosting thing that just lets you put like NAR file things in a URL and it generates a NAR file. But that wouldn't be fun. Um, instead, I used a file URL in a fixed output derivation uh, using the built-in fetch URL handler which somehow works reliably. And then I turn it into fixed output derivation just for fun. Um, this is actually a really weird hack and broke in newer versions of Nix, uh, because it turns out that fixed output derivations aren't entirely supposed to have dependencies on like non-fixed output paths. Um, and at this point, you might be realizing that I'm kind of going against the grain of Nix, the expression language. And you'd be right, but it gets a bit worse before I like completely uh, changed course. Because the actual package structure in Zilch, prototype one that is, is a bit more complex. Because I wanted int proper introspectability. I don't really like the fact that in Nix packages you have build dependencies, host dependencies, and everything mixed into one list of arguments given to an attribute. And to even find out the name of the derivation, you have to evaluate it, which is slow. So I thought, just make the top level an adder set, have a nice little separated build dependencies, host dependencies, the actual thing that builds a derivation, and flags. Because I wanted proper flags. Things that are introspectable that you can say, I want my dependency to have a version of Nix with OpenSSL compiled in, or one without. I'm not the first one with this idea. All the way back in 2003, uh, one of the f very first commits into Nix packages actually mentions this entire design, this concept. Um, but the issue is that uh, doing this properly kind of requires proper SAT solving or equivalent. And I decided that that's probably not fun to do in the Nix expression language. I will tolerate a lot, but I think writing a SAT solver might be going a bit too far. Uh, I could try and transpile it from like pure script or Rust or something, but I didn't really feel like doing that. So uh, I kind of shelved this idea and started working on a new prototype. Uh, that was closer to the beginning of this year, uh, where I just kind of remembered some of the experimentation I'd done, and uh, I was looking at a lot of different languages. Uh, among others, I had a small prototype in Clojure, and a prototype uh, and some design bits in Prolog of all languages. Uh, it would have looked a lot different. I ended up coincidentally on Scheme, Chicken Scheme, currently. Now, if you've been at the talk yesterday about work, you might know what is going to happen in a bit. Uh, but the primary reason I chose a real programming language, a, gener a general one with working tail call recursion is because I think system configuration and even larger builds kind of need more than just like a language that's effectively a slightly fancy DSL. And I mean, Geeks has already kind of proven that you can do this in Scheme. Uh, and that's having a proper language might be better for this. So I was just going to give this a try. Uh, well, first of all, I had to write an entire Nix daemon client in Scheme because I didn't have the usefulness of the Nix daemon and the Nix interpreter. This isn't special, but it turns out that having direct interaction with the Nix daemon and a language that uh, understands null bytes means that you can just... Uh, I could throw away a lot of these hacks I had. Uh, being able to just generate a NAR file is great. Um, and it makes Bootstrap a lot easier. But I still want Nix packages compatibility for now because it is a massive package set and I don't want to reinvent the wheel that far yet. 
So I'm just going to call Nix instantiate as a subprocess, right? Nah. I mean, it's it's a project I'm working on. You've seen the chaos I've already done. Uh, I'm going to do something slightly better. Uh, well, as you've heard yesterday, Yorick has been working on the Nix CFFI. And when I saw that, I thought, I'm implementing that. And I kind of went overboard. Uh, you can actually, rep uh, I can represent arbitrary scheme values in Nix now, including symbols and stuff. And I finally found a way to make the Nix uh, interpreter, like Nix expression language, actually like a proper programming language. Just call eval. <laughs> so yeah, um, I, I kind of went a bit overboard here. Um, and by the way, these are actually, um, I didn't actually mention this before, these are actually scheme REPLs. I just made it so if you use curly brackets, it just l interprets it as Nix code. Because again, I went overboard and it's, it's kind of funny. Um, now there's a lot of things that, uh, to be fair, this prototype I have is a lot less finished. So prototype one had like an entire nice little bootstrap that could basically self-host, though I don't actually think I ever took the proper GC patch, so it might be slightly broken. Um, but I have a lot of plans and One of the, uh, and like, I, I have too many plans to be fair. Um, first of the, the biggest one obviously is, uh, I want to be able to break, uh, run arbitrary scheme code properly sandboxed. Uh, the way I'm going to do that is very fun. I'm just going to make it so you can only talk to the next daemon, not to anything else. If you want to fetch your role, you're going to have to create a derivation and run it, etc. Uh, this is a very simple solution that I hope is going to be mostly airtight. Uh, and this entire project is basically just my whims. I want to see if I can make something better. I want to see if I can do it as differently as possible because, again, this entire project is kind of to see how far can we push Nix because Nix is great, it's been, but it's been 20 years. I think we can have a bit more innovation. And yeah, I finally want to implement the reason I want uh, I switched over to Scheme from uh, an expression language, which is having proper package flags and package resolving. Uh, I'm working on a large project that I'm trying to get some funding for, for doing uh, proper incremental builds on arbitrary, uh, on arbitrary build systems by parsing ninja files, which again, I think would be kind of easy, uh, which I think I can make Scheme uh, Zilch do pretty well. Uh, I have bigger plans like obliterating the concept of cross-compiling as it exists today. Uh, and uh, I've been kind of also working on another side project to my side project called Zilchi, which uh, I may or may not do more with. Uh, if you're in any way interested in this project, find me, find me in hash Zilch on LiberaCat, uh, sponsor me on GitHub, uh, and um, yeah, I guess that's it. Questions? You take your time, I'm going to take my pox. I'll come. Thank you. Got a, where was that end again? On that slide with REPLs, there was like two apostrophes and a V letter in between them. Was it a bird face? Yeah, it was, I just needed something in there. Uh, I, I should have possibly mentioned the fact that I did that is because the, um, the apostrophe is also used as a symbol escape in a uh, scheme, like as a quote. And as you can tell in the first, uh, in the first REPL, the quote is done properly for scheme value. And in the second one, because it's in a string, it doesn't unquote it. Uh, it doesn't quote it, which is a lot of dark magic I had to do to make that work. Yep. 
So you're demonstrating here calling uh, Nick's code from scheme. Can you do the inverse? Yes. I mean, I kind of show that off. If you see the, the comma eval is basically the equivalent of a, uh, it's a, it's an unquote from a quasi quote, but in Nick's code, it basically takes the value that's in the eval variable and passes it into Nick's there. Which, and the eval is then the scheme eval, which takes its argument and parses it as an S expression, which here is a list. Yeah. So you, you said you tried a couple of different languages before you finally settled on Chicken Scheme. Can you say why you settled on Chicken Scheme? It's not necessarily one of them, you know, Haskell has quasi-quoting, many other programming, functional programming languages have a lot of these features. What was so appealing about Scheme for this? Mostly Scheme because, uh, I, I chose Scheme mostly because it's uh, relatively the code is data, data is code thing, as well as the fact that it is an interpreted language. One of the goals I have, which I, didn't kind of mention in the future is that most of scheme, uh, most of Zilch, other than the bit that actually uh, evaluates the code and ensures that it can only talk to the daemon, uh, is going to be entirely. Uh, you can just have that inside of your project. So, you, most of the command line interface can be just. You can redefine most of the command line interface, and having to compile a whole bunch of Haskell code for that. Uh, would be kind of tiring at some point, especially if you want to run this on lower end hardware. You, you said something about obliterating cross compilation. Uh, can you expand on that? Well, it's kind of, if you've seen uh, how Zig does, comp uh, Zig's C compilation support is kind of similar to the idea I had, which basically just involves creating uh, one big. Uh, compi like one compiler, uh, like based on Clang, and then just loading it up with every single libc I can find. I mean, sh it should be cheap enough to do with Muscle, uh, to just compile Muscle for every architecture, and then just have one compiler that can be reused. Um, there's a bit of, uh, yeah, there's also some other differences, especially in Prototype 1, which I was working on. I didn't actually like to clang to compile under Zilch for uh, annoying bootstrap reasons, which did similar, um, where I tried to do similar trickery. Um, yeah, I suspect this could be done in X packages with a bit of a C, uh, CC wrapper as well, uh, in X packages. But I haven't really tried because I first wanted to get clang working and I never got that working. All right. Thank you very much, Parker. Thank you.